What's up? The Infant Powerhouse Mitches. I'm back again with a painting tutorial, tips and tricks on true metallic gold. So I've done a few of these now, one on red and um, one on some like slime effects that I've been doing. So it's true metallic gold. This is the uh, Captain Cassius guy from Death Watch Overkill. It's Autan Cassius, I think. Ignore the rest of the model because there's just a few uh, base coats at the minute. I'm just sort of working on this one for eBay. So on the true metallic gold, I'm going to work pr predominantly on this, um, the Crozier's Arcanium, whatever it is, on the uh, on the left arm. So I've got uh, one base coat down, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So I use a few non-metallic techniques, um, and if you're not familiar with what that is, it's creating a gold effect, or a silver effect, or a metallic effect without actually using a paint that's got metallic pigment in it. So it would be various shades of brown and yellow that make you know make it look like gold, really classic like art theory stuff. Um, and I can't really do it justice in an explanation like that, so go and find it online if you want to know um, more. But this is true metallic metals, as in um, the, the paint physically has gold flecks in it, or not real gold, but you know metallic flecks in the in the, in the paint. A few of them, and then I personally use, and again this is just just me, it's just what I sort of do. Um, some of the non-metallic metal techniques, as in some of the shades that um, you would typically find in a non-metallic technique to shade true metallic metals so the actual the, the base one that I use most is Gehenna's Gold from Citadel again I'll, I'll have all these on the screen on like a little annotation thing but Gehenna Gold, Auric Armour and then I use uh, what's it called Chrome Vallejo Chrome Model Air so uh, that's like a really white like probably the lightest sort of silver you can get and you use a little bit of dry brush for that thing so if you want to join in I've got Vallejo Extra Opaque Heavy Violet, I've got Caliban Green, Rhinox Hide, Mournfang Brown, Agrax Earthshade, Seraphim Sepia, Gehenna's Gold, Auric Armor Gold, Cassandora Yellow, Lamenta's Yellow, I've got Vallejo Model Air Metallic Chrome, and the thing's rubbed off, I can't see it, I'm sure it's called Chrome. Anyway, that one, and two brushes. Windsor and Newton zero and a Windsor and Newton double zero, both series seven. Um, the tip's going a little bit on my zero, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. I should have took better care of it. <laughs> anyway, so I've got one base coat of uh, Gehenna's gold in there, so I'm just going to put another one on. Uh, mix this correctly because this, in particular, has a red uh, medium, and the red medium really that like, comes through. So if you open it up now, you can see there that's not the colour it's probably supposed to be, it's like really red. So if you mix it up you get like the actual colour which is closer to that, which is much lighter on the outside. So if you can, if you've got the time, shake it up for a few minutes, like time yourself because you won't be shaking it that long, but do it for literally two minutes because uh, get a good effect then. So it should be alright. There it is. So a little bit of water, I don't mix them down too much. Um, I personally as well. I have a bit of a habit of using them straight out of the pot, which is fine if you just take it a bit there. But generally, you know, you'd use the, uh, you'd use a palette. So, so uh, they dry really fast, which is cool. Um, and if you do too thick a layer without really, um, you know, without watering it down or having water on the brush to start off with, the Games Workshop ones can clump, which means it'll sit inside the crevices and stuff in the model potentially ruining some of the details that has happened once or twice not often if you're careful and a trick uh, would be to like like now turn the model wherever you can and then paint away from the crevices like so so you you take the brush off the model where you want the most paint to be so you I want the paint to be on the surfaces so I paint towards the surface or the raised surfaces get inside all these little bits as well So, um, so yeah, so I'm halfway through painting this one. Really cool, the Death Watch Overkill models. And uh, another thing as well, um, I usually wear gloves. Sometimes the oils on the fingers will um, leave a fingerprint on the model. So having big hands and that, I either use uh, I usually blue tack them onto a paint top or wear a pair of gloves. You can get latex gloves on eBay for a quid or something. So just get a few of them, buy them in the shops and that. Um, or, you know. Just whatever, eBay. I've got these cool black ones that I think tattooists use, which is kind of cool. So, 
So just there like that. So again, the crevice is in the centre obviously of the uh, of the pattern, so I'm just painting away. Away from that. So wash your brush off again. Uh, make sure the brush is really clean from these because sometimes it's the pigment seems to be really thick. Like the individual pieces of metal in the pigment seem to be really thick, so it gets stuck in the brush. So really wash that off for a second. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So these are going to dry um, just for a second, and I'm going to pause the video while it does dry. Uh, just get these bits done on the side. Just making sure you've took everything. A, a big thing for me was just like stopping and then looking around everything just to make sure you've got it. Like taking just taking a second and just thinking like right, turning it round from all the angles. See I've missed a little bit there, which I would have missed otherwise. So just there. On the inside. Over there like so. And there. Yeah, across this edge. Like that. So yeah, we're gonna set that uh, take a minute to to just dry. Now, you can you can you can take away any of these steps. Like I'm going to do three or four different ones just to show them off. But I think altogether, um, you can use like just sepia or just the agrax earth shade, and that'd be really quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that first, and then you can add some like extra layers in later on if you want. Um, you know, so sort of just just do your thing, um, and I'll show you a few speed painting techniques, which is what I'm actually going to do. I'm not going to sit and so sort of like edge highlight every single one of the feathers of this little thing. I'm going to show you one of the really quick techniques I um that I used to do it. So again, it's the same as anything. It's about striking that balance between speed and quality. So, and this one, yes, you could go through with a fine brush. Yes, you absolutely could. And you know, edge highlight every single little bit and go, you know, and go through. But it'd take half an hour, and it's that's not. I mean, even though it'd add a lot, a lot to the model. Some of these in particular, just the tabletop thing. Um, if you are a commission painter, you can't make money doing that very often. And, um, you know, it looks great, but like I said, it's just a bit of a bit of a time sink. So, yeah. uh, so that's it. So I would usually either use, I'd start off with a, a, a wash of Seraphim Sepia. But I say in this one, I'm going to go straight to Agrax the Earth Shade. I've got these big tubs, which are cool, but see on the bottom there, the pigment catches. So you've got to shake them. Again, same as always. You've always got to shake them, but shake this up real nice. Give it, uh, give it a few seconds longer than I would, or longer I'm going to in this video certainly. So there it is. Probably sounds really dodgy off the camera, doesn't it? <laughs> so uh, pretty, pretty much dry now. Pretty much dry. I might, I might, might, might cock it up a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I think it's um, no. In fact, now I'm going to pause. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to pause, and then I'll come back in a second when it's fully dry. <laughs> 